bartender says, okay, okay, if the dog talks, you get a free drink. So, the guy turns to the dog and he says, yo, Henry, what do you call the skin on a tree? The outer the, the... covering, it's not skin. What? Oh, come on, Diana, now you've been dating for it long enough to know he's compulsive. But... All right, all right. What do you call the outer covering on a tree? And the dog looks up and says, Bark! And the bartender says, Give me a break out of here, He both says, you What kind of thing is that? No free drinks. Ford, do you want to tell the joke? No. Go ahead. So, the guy turns to the dog and says, This is your last shot, Henry. Who was the greatest baseball player of all time? And the dog says, Ruth! And the bartender throws them both out the door. And they're out there, they're sitting in the dirt. And the dog looks up at his master and says, DiMaggio? <laughs> 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 he laughed. You gonna give me credit? Can you ignore the coaching that enhanced it? Well, apparently Hart did. <laughs> Cat. Cat. electric blanket. With some faith, Diana. <laughs> Ford, the only thing I can think of are my toes. They're freezing. Is this not a perfect representation of Franklin Ford? A single control, it's got to be on your side of the bed. <laughs> oh, shit. What? I left my diaphragm in my purse. Would you get it for me? Oh, so much for spontaneity. This should be a safe time of the month, shouldn't it, Diana? Forget it. Quit being a pansy and get up and get the lousy diaphragm. You are thinking as completely non-sequential. You go from A to W to B to Z. <laughs> what, do you need sex to be organized? We are in the middle of foreplay, and the diaphragm is five freezing paces away. <laughs> we have choices here, Ford. You want to talk gestalt or you want to make love? <sighs> <laughs> I'll do that. Thank you, Mrs. Nottingham. He, uh, takes a bit of milk in his tea and, uh, Sugar is strictly off his diet, even if he should request it. Thank you, Mrs. Nottingham. No sugar. She's very fond of you, Charles. And very protective. I have known Mrs. Nottingham for over 27 years. Her service here is a lifetime Organized dedication. Thank you. Nottingham makes it very clear that you and this office are her territory. After so many years of a relationship, there is bound to be some trace of eccentricity. Eccentricities. Charles, you have the ability to corral an entire gamut of human emotion with just a turn of some detached phrase. Am I being accused of insensitivity? Oh, no, no, Charles, you're not an insensitive man. But you're hardly empathic. At the risk of regretting that question, 
Would you care to develop that argument? The dean's teas for the first year students? It is an opportunity for first year students to mingle with members of their faculty without the weight of academic responsibilities hanging over their head. Charles, you've just proved my point. The teas are nerve wracking. The students feel as though they're under a microscope. It is a social occasion. Is it appropriate to load this up with drama and pathos? Charles, I've heard that every year, like clockwork, a student faints at one of those teas. If a student faints over small talk on a social occasion, how may we expect that student to fare before the justices of the Supreme Court? Or a non sequitur, Charles. I've argued before the Supreme Court many times, and I've won more often than I've lost. And I still carry the scar where my head hit the foot of the coffee table many years ago at a dean's tea. How's it going, wife? Shh. What is it, Belle? It was a greeting, Weinstein. Oh, I saw you two hours ago. Well, look, why don't we keep the highs and the how are yous like to a bare minimum, okay? Weinstein, I've been in this dormitory for three years, and I have never met anybody as hostile as you. Is that supposed to wreck my day or something? <laughs> Traditions of the English tea service? You can't study for a tea. Oh, really? It's a social event. You know the difference between a high tea and a low tea? How about the difference between a crumpet and a scone? Uh, can you tell me how tea made its way from Asia to Europe? Hmm? Why don't you know you got some strikes against you? But the point is to just be yourself. No way. What do you think I got here on charm? Uh uh. It's all brains, pal. Hey, Rose, wait up. Hi. Hi. I gotta get in shape. That's a great-looking suit. Thank you. Gee, she ought to wear that to the teeth. I'm not going. I beg your pardon? I'm not going to go. It's not mandatory, you know. God, it's important. Don't be ridiculous. I'll tell you what's ridiculous. Look, I'm 20 years older than any other student here. Well, you're just as old in class. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> but it hasn't ever gotten in your way there. I mean, you perform brilliantly. Thank you. It's different in class. I present material in class. You don't have to worry about making scintillating small talk. Look, this is just a tea. You've probably been to a million things like it in your life. You know, never alone, never without a man on my arm. And I've always been with people my own age. You won't be alone. You'll be with all the other students. Oh, God, I'd rather be swimming in a septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get a move on. We're going to be late for Kingsfield. Are you all right, honey? What's the matter? I don't know. I've been kind of queasy all day. You think it's the flu, or maybe it's just the mention of Kingsfield's name, huh? <laughs> Probably just normal free-floating anxiety. You're going to be all right? Maybe I'll stop by health services this afternoon. Dean Perry cordially invites you to the dean's tea. What date did you get, Winchester? 17th. Huh? Oh, mine's not till almost a week later. Don't take it personally, Weinstein. They can't fit everybody in one tea. Yeah, but mine's on the 22nd. That means I must be the very last tea, or at least close to it. Is that good? Oh, God, I, I don't know if that's good or not. Probably not. I think it's an advantage to be among the first group while the faculty's still fresh. Oh. They'll be nauseous at the sight of tea cake by the time your group rolls in. Oh. Very good, Winchester. By the time your group rolls in, what is this? Psychological warfare? What, do you expect me to start stuttering? 
<laughs> God help anybody around you if that happens. Try to remember to swallow before you talk, Weinstein. Go ahead, Winchester. See if you can unnerve me. Weinstein, calm down. It's only a tea. You know better than that, Ford. Three years down the line, when we need recommendations for clerkships, a sterling performance at one of these teas can make or break. It's called a key, Hart. If I look on this as exercise, I won't get hostile. Of course, if you ever choose to live alone. You... Oh, surprise. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. I guess I should have called first. Um, but I really needed to see you. Make yourself comfortable. I've only got another hour or so of constitutional law. <clears throat> um, Ford, <clears throat> why don't you find a bookmark? Diana, I've only got one chapter left. Relish the anticipation. Ford, where the hell are you? Look at me. Do I look like I'm ready to jump into the sack? I'm pregnant. How did this happen? We weren't careless. Look, the last thing I want to do is start blaming each other. But I don't understand. <sighs> it's not that tough, Ford. I'm a statistic. 3% conceived despite the contraceptive. This is lucky, huh? <laughs> What do you want to do? I want to terminate the pregnancy. I don't have the money. I think it's only fair that you pay half. Sure. Yeah, uh, uh, of course. I'll make out a check. I wasn't very articulate last night. It kind of caught me by surprise. Yeah, well, me too. Oh. Well, some things work out in life. Can we get out of here? Oh, Ford, look, I have so much work to do. It's okay. I'm handling the situation. Oh, there are some things I really want to talk about. Well, I can't dwell on this. I gotta move on. I, I don't know how you can censor a conversation when we have a problem like this. Well, Ford, what is there to talk about? I mean, the decision's made. I'm not so sure. Look, I've been doing a lot of thinking since last night. Maybe we're moving too quickly. Maybe there are other choices we haven't thought of. Ford. I think it's pointless to discuss alternatives we just can't take. And I don't want to discuss it here. Where, then? Why is everything happening at 90 miles an hour? The only thing you've asked me for so far is money. Well, I think my opinion should count. Okay. What choice do we have? Diana. There is no edict that says we have to abort. 
We could go through with the pregnancy. We could even get married. <laughs> Shh. You think that's funny? I think it's the proper thing to do. Oh, Ford, how can you consider marriage? We have a disintegrating relationship. And it's held together by a few good laughs at each other's expense and some great sex. And you really want to base a lifetime commitment on that? I think it's possible. It's not possible. Ford, I can appreciate your wanting to have a say in this, but the bottom line is you don't. It's my body. It's my pregnancy. And I'm the one who's going to be most affected by this decision. That means I'm the one who's going to make it. Talk to you later, Tina. See you. Bye bye. Did you remember Mother's birthday? Oh, my God. Look, uh, I'll wire her some flowers. You want your name on it? No, I sent her chocolates. Was it today or yesterday? Yesterday. Well, how bad should I feel? After all, it's the secretary who sends us a check on our birthdays. Not exactly the Waltons, huh? Bye. See ya. Yeah. What happened there, Bloomfield? Was it rough? What did they ask you? Acid. Acid dripped from my arms. Silk. It's wrecked. Everyone sweats, Bloomfield. That's no news. Have a heart, Weinstein. I am ready to pass out. Did they scrutinize you? Oh, I mean, were they testing your knowledge? Or, or did you just have to be yourself? Did charm enter into this? Were you charming, Bloomfield? Oh. Hey, Diana. How'd it go? It wasn't too bad, Rose. You should go. Let me see you. You look like you're wearing green makeup. I'm just nauseous. Mm-hmm. The same symptoms as the other day. Doobie Hall. Uh -huh. Ford? Yeah, it's Bill. Let me look. Diana, it's Ford. Uh, I can't find her right now. I'll tell her you called. Ice. Hart, you seen Diana? Uh uh, not tonight. Boy, you look like hell. Hey, what's going on? See you later. Is this really necessary? Not if you answered my phone calls. Mm, look, I'm tired. I don't have the energy to fight with you, Ford. I don't think I'm the one who's turned this into an antagonistic situation. You keep your voice down, please. Why aren't you answering my phone calls? You want to know if I've had the abortion? Have you? No. Have you been to the clinic? Have you made arrangements? 
Why do you think you have the right to come in here and interrogate me? Because the baby is half mine. Look, you've made an instantaneous decision, and I've been excluded. All I am asking for is a chance for discussion. I don't have the luxury of waiting around till all your opinions are in place. Ford, you have to understand something. It's not up to you. It's up to me. Are you at least willing to admit there are alternatives? No. For me, there aren't. Hear me, Ford. Your law career isn't jeopardized. You don't have to carry this for nine months. You're a spectator in this. I hardly think you'd be in this condition if I were simply a spectator. God damn it, Ford. It's my body, and it's going through changes. I feel different. I feel pregnant. I, I, don't make me have to wait. You haven't answered my question. Have you made... Have you scheduled an appointment? Tuesday. This is the last clean coffee cup. Think we should hire someone? It's gratifying to know I missed. <laughs> How's it going? Not particularly well. There is virtually no law on father's rights. Ford, it was only 1972 that Roe versus Wade even allowed women to have legal abortions. I mean, before then, women were perforating their uteruses with coat hangers. And it isn't really surprising that the law supports women in this. Whoa, wait a minute. Look, I can understand that there are situations when a woman cannot go through with a pregnancy. I remember when all abortions were illegal, no matter what the circumstances, and I certainly do not want to go back to those days. But it still eludes me why a father has no say. Because the woman carries the baby. A freak of nature. It is still half my child. 50% of the chromosomes shaping that child are mine. Are you really being fair, Ford? I mean, do you actually want a baby? Of course I want a baby. Why? Why? James, we are talking about a child. Procreation. The reason we are put on this planet. Now, why else would I be fighting so hard? I'm not sure. I think you're frustrated because she's holding all the cards. Thanks for the support, pal. Listen. We've been friends a long time, and I'll help you in any way I can. But ask yourself, Ford, are you prepared to win? Tomorrow's good. Now, are you asking me my advice as a lawyer or as a friend? Golden, as much as I value your personal opinion, that's not what you're here for. Look, it would be tough enough if you and Diana were married, but you're not. Trying to establish paternal rights in a case like this would mean a judicial process that would take years. Makes the issue moot, doesn't it? Damn it! I can't believe I have no legal recourse in this. I've met Diana. She seems pretty level-headed. Can't you appeal to her on a personal level? She's adamant. If she had any willingness to listen, I wouldn't be sitting here. I need to buy time. For what? Time to prevent Diana from taking an easy out.
What? I think I could buy you some time. But I have to warn you, for what I'm going to do won't leave Diana in a mood for thoughtful discussion. If that's all that's left to me, I'm willing to make a drastic move. Hi. <laughs> My kid picking up strangers again? <laughs> oh. How old is he? Uh, nine months. Hello. Emily. Hello. Oh, a girl. Sorry. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Sometimes we tape a bow to her head. <laughs> <laughs> Is she your first? Oh, yes. My wife was really anxious to start a family. She had visions of six kids. Yeah, but this one tempered that. Tough, huh? Uh, let me put it this way. They begin cute for a reason. <laughs> I have a baby on the way. That's terrific. Thanks. Best of luck. Thank you. Could I get a pencil, please? trying to prove, Ford? That I have a voice in this. You bastard! If your intention is to make me miserable, you're succeeding. All you've done with your temporary restraining order is delay it for three days. No, what it does is give me time to prepare points and authorities for a preliminary injunction. Why are you doing this to me? Please keep your voice down. What, does it embarrass you? I don't think it's everybody's business. Oh, you want privacy? You didn't give a goddamn about my privacy when you had this served. You have made it very clear from the onset that my feelings mean nothing to you in this. You cannot make me have a baby. And you can't blithely ruin my chance to have a child. Blithely? Ford, I worked so hard to get here. If I stop now, I lose my scholarship. Please don't do this. Yeah? It's me. Hi, Hen. Thanks. This thing cooks up a mean brew. Got me through last night. Hey, how are you? Mm hmm? My feet are freezing. Come on, give them to me. Oh. My mother used to do this for me. It's enough to pull the rug out from under anybody. Oh, I'm angry, Rose. I'm angry this happened to me by accident. And I'm angry at Ford for not making it any easier. Sounds like he really wants this child. Oh, it's like most men. He likes the fantasy of being a father. What about you? You don't fantasize about being a mother? Sometimes. But I couldn't handle it right now. I'd be so bitter. I'm afraid I'd take it out on the child. Rose, if you'd had a choice 20 years ago, what would you have done? Oh, honey, 20 years ago, we didn't have a choice. We got married, we had children, and we raised them. Any regrets? Mm-hmm. About four or five times a day. But you know, when I look at my children, I can't even imagine my life without them. And then again, look at me, at this age, starting law school. You see, you can have it all, just not when you want it. Hmm? Come on, let's 
scooter. Diana, I want to have this baby. Ford, why are you so desperate? I see it as a chance. One that may never happen again. Ford, you're too young to call this a last chance. I'm going to have a wife. I don't know her name yet, but I know exactly who she is. Smith Wellesley Vassar. She'll be pretty, poised, cultured, Children, probably two, and will live in a lovely house in Connecticut. For these are not the words of a desperate man. Listen more carefully. I'll be the same kind of Ford my father is, the same kind of Ford my grandfather was. I'll be a gray-suited lawyer on Wall Street, leading a gray, predictable life. Well, there are all kinds of ways to make your life more meaningful. None as significant as this. I have visions of a little hand in mine, walking him to school, Soccer, Little League. Well, is there a plan B in case it's a girl? She doesn't date until she's 18. <laughs> <laughs> Doll houses, birthday parties. We'll bake. <laughs> what else do little girls like to do? Well, you'll have to do some reading up on that. Diana, please reconsider. Ford, I don't know if you've worn me down or what, but I've actually been thinking of having this baby. Diana, what are you saying? I'm saying I've seen how much you want it, and I think I could go through with it. But there are certain conditions. Such as? The, the child is totally your responsibility.
fine. Yeah, I mean it. Once the child is born, that I'm just the bearer. If that's what you want. Though maybe I could visit it every once in a while. Yeah, Any time you want. Okay. Um, there are some other things I need your help with. If I can't finish next term, I lose my scholarship. Finances aren't a problem. I'll help you. What else? Um, that's it. Diana. Thank you. to have been the first apostle of tea. You have read Cha King, I presume? <gasps> no, thank you. Well, I was only able to get a hold of the first volume. This is good. Remain inconspicuous, don't talk to anyone, and we won't make assholes out of ourselves. But if we don't talk to anyone, aren't we defeating the purpose of the tea? It doesn't matter. We put in the appearance. Well, hello. Hello. I'm Professor Tyler. Oh, I'm Rose Samuels. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wayne. Here, yeah, can we do something? I have to get off my feet. Oh, wait oh, a second. Why don't, why don't we put him down oh, Excuse me, would you mind? No, thank you. No, no, that's, thank that's you. Fine. It's coming through. Sorry. Easy. No, easy. No, Keep it would straight. Up, that's please, please. Thank you. Would you thank you so no, much? Thank you. Oh, easy. Sit uh, gently. No. I know exactly how you feel. I understand his work is considered to be the holy scripture at tea. It is the most comprehensive and the longest discourse ever written about tea. Not only does he discuss the nature of the tea plant, but also the color of the cup in which it should be drunk. Blue was his favorite. In some ways, being older is an advantage. I'm used to competing with my children. <laughs> Did, did you have trouble getting an apartment? I didn't even look. I'm in the uh, dorm with the other one else. Really? Yeah, you know, when my children went to college, they couldn't wait to get out of the dorm and get their own apartment. But for me, the dorm's a luxury. I mean, how can I pass up a place where breakfast is already cooked? <laughs> is there an extra room? <laughs> Well, I believe then the tea masters adopted the black and dark brown colors for their tea savings. Perhaps you will refresh my memory in the various categories that he established for the boiling of water. Gladly. Hello. Hello, Weinstein. Hi. Weinstein. She spent the entire tea talking to Kingsfield. He didn't move. She must have had her knee on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he seemed charmed. Weinstein, we're talking about the same Weinstein. <laughs> See you. Thank you, you too. Ooh, what's for dinner? Voila! Pizza. Takeout? You invite me to dinner and order takeout? Well, it's not bad pizza. I got you anchovies and olives. Ugh. I hate anchovies. No, you don't. You love them. Frank, the only thing I hate worse than anchovies is olives. Here, pick them off. Thank you. So, how's uh, Unplanned Parenthood coming along? It's fine. I've already written to some daycare centers, and a friend of mine has promised to come over and teach me how to change diapers. <laughs> Frank, do you really know what you're in for? Oh, of course I do. Tom, it is going to open up my life. A new beginning. Starting law practice and moving to New York. That isn't enough of a beginning. Yeah, well, those things just focus on me. That's all I've ever done. 
Maybe it's time to focus on someone else. Frank, if you can't do better than pizza out of a cardboard box for yourself, uh, how do you expect to care for an infant? I'll order takeout baby food. You think that's funny? Are you going to see the humor in it when the kid is teething and you've been up all night and you got a client screaming at you over the phone? I am huh? not some washerwoman with a naked kid balanced on my hip. I have the means to give a child a wonderful life. Yeah, what kind of life? Nannies and nursemaids? An unavailable parent? Sound familiar, Frank? I don't have to make the same mistakes our parents made. It'll be different. How? I'll love the child. I'm sure you will, but will you care for it? Come on, Frank. It's deja vu. You want the kid to have the same kind of childhood we did? It doesn't have to. Frank. Frank, you're the consummate forward. We're talking generations of children who are not heard or seen. Children who wire flowers a day late for your birthday. I mean, you're kidding yourself if you think you can break out of that overnight. Damn it, Tom. The last thing I need right now is someone undermining my confidence. Really? I thought the focus was supposed to be off you, Frank. along by, I, I saw your light on. Just happened to be taking a stroll at two in the morning? That's the price I pay for having a roommate who is president of Law Review. A late night chat necessitates a cross-campus trek. Anything in particular on your mind? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Just, uh... Happy-go-lucky guy. Do you know that when I was in high school, I never gave a girl my ring? And in college, the most personal gift I ever gave to a woman was a silk scarf. The longest relationship of my adult life has been with Pamela Adler. Isn't she the one that went to Stanford? Most of our relationship was carried out through correspondence. Is that not a laugh? I'm sorry for it. You know, James, I... I know myself better than you might think. I know exactly what my life will be. I don't like it. But I lack the courage to change it. And is not true? I may lack courage, but not insight. There is a fact a truth I have desperately avoided. The gray life of the Fords inevitably awaits me. That's why you wanted the baby so much? I thought it could do for me what I couldn't do for myself. 
free me from that colorless existence. Quite a burden to put on a child, isn't it? But it still wouldn't change anything. The forces are too powerful, I'm afraid. It won't be such a bad life for it. Oh, not materially. But emotionally, there's not much to look forward to. You're wrong for it. Now, I saw the way you fought this way for a little bit of happiness. You can find it even as a Ford. I hope so, James. I really do. All set? You didn't eat, did you? No. Hm. You need anything? Mm, well, I'm all set. I I'm think... sorry. You first. I'm sorry that I made it so rough on you. I think we made it rough on each other, and you were as affected as I was, and I didn't see that. You know, I was prepared to go through this alone. Well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> 